Before we get into the video, I need you guys to do me a favour. Number one, like the video. Also comment. Let me know your thoughts on the case. Tottenham's Mark Lambie was widely considered the consummate leader of Tottenham Mandem Gang, TMD or Mandem Crew. At the height of his notorious reign, the general public actually believed that Mark Lambie had the influence to summon Jojo by tapping into his African ancestry. That was the only way that people could rationalise the fact that Mark Lambie seemed to have nine lives. The guy was the luckiest person in the capital. Now Mark Lambie was considered untouchable. This earned him the nickname Old Beer Man or the Prince of Darkness. Now Tottenham Mandem or TMD, whatever you want to call them. Nonetheless, under Mark Lambie's guidance, the North London based gang is said to have been responsible for at least three dozen M's, including that of police officer Keith Blakelock. During the 1985 riots, when Mark Lambie was only a young teenager, at just 14 years old, Mark Lambie had established himself as a hard-headed teenager, streetwise, stubborn, and an individual that was menacing, standoffish, and not afraid to confront authority, namely older GMs or even the police. On October 5th, 1985, at 1 p.m., police had entered 49-year-old Cynthia Jarrett's home in Broadwater Farm after they had detained her son, Floyd Jarrett, after they believed he was travelling in a potentially stolen car. That turned out to be false. Police made a decision to turn up at Floyd's home, enter their home without a warrant or even introducing themselves. They marched right into the property, half a dozen of them. It was then alleged that the Met had put their hands on Cynthia Jarrett and shooed her out of the way. Cynthia ultimately collapsed and did not wake up. Now when it became clear that Cynthia was in a bad way, needing medical assistance, officers then began CPR. However, Cynthia was quickly pronounced dead. When the public demanded an investigation, the jury concluded accidental death and denied any responsibility, just calling it an unfortunate accident. Now the aftermath would be the riots. There were protests up and down the country that included Manchester, Liverpool, Nottingham, but of course this happened in Tottenham. So protesters gathered outside the police station on Sunday morning, October 6th, in order to demand justice. Over the next few hours, over 500 young black men had gathered, bricks, bottles, sticks. The angry mob launched objects at officers. They screamed, they shouted, they set car lights and also launched concrete slabs from the high walkways of a grey, colourless, broad water farm estate. As officers wearing NATO helmets and protective gear came to terms with the furious public, Officer Keith Blakelock was protecting firefighters attempting to put out the burning cars. A mob dressed in black charged at the unit. The officer was swallowed up by the mob. Keith Blakelock was taken to the ground and was bladed 43 times. By the time his colleagues had rescued Blakelock, he had axe marks to the face. 14-year-old Mark Lambie was charged as part of the group involved in the fatal incident. Now, during the trial, a witness says that they saw Mark Lambie force his way to the ground and grab PC Keith Blakelock and pull him down. However, the investigation was hampered with forced witness statements and out-and-out -out lies. The case ultimately fell apart and Mark Lambie walked away. Now, by 19 years old, Mark Lambie had established TMD as one of the biggest gangs in North London. They controlled at least 80% of the drug trade in North London by taking over smaller gangs. What he did was go to other GMs, hold them hostage, take over stash houses, commandeer their gold jewellery and designer clothes, and use sheer physical force to make sure that the other GMs were permanently erased from the planet. And, of course, extortion. Harsden, Ladbrook Grove, Lewisham and beyond was said to all be controlled by Mark Lambie at one point. Now, by toppling these rivals' operation, Mark Lambie had painted a target on his back. And in order to show his resolve, in 1991, he was sentenced to three and a half years due to his involvement in a... This was later reduced to one year. 
Now, by now, Barkle's firmly on the police radar as a known player in the wholesale and distribution of Class A gear. Police believed that Mark was getting imported, shipped to London through tin cans. Now, London witnessed its first taste that Mark Lambie was a dangerous and a GM leader who was not to be messed with. It was alleged that Jerome Maddox, who was known to be a street dealer, his house was. Now, Jerome Maddox took a one-way ticket to Jamaica in response to decide on his next move whether he wanted to really go ahead and start a madness with Mark Lambie. Within just a few weeks, Jerome was fatally shot in Jamaica. With Mark Lambie gaining more power and dominating other crews such as Hackney Mandem and LOM, in 1996, police received intel that Mark and his associate, Clifford Angol, had targeted Keith Rowe in Wilsden, West London. After receiving a tip from a woman, Kenneth, who was originally from Stamford Hill and was part of the DMC posse, that was made up of GMs from South Tottenham, Stamford Hill and Clapton. Now Kenneth refused to cooperate with the police and no one would be charged for the incident despite the fact that Mark had been detained at one point. Ultimately, again, he was let go. Now just six months after the incident, Kenneth Rowe was fatally. Gangs across London had band together trying to take out Mark. In 1997, three men had entered a Jamaican restaurant called The Place To Be, located in West London. The men says they wanted to speak to a Mark. Now, it was reported that Mark was actually in the restaurant at the time the men had entered. Sensing something was wrong, Mark kept quiet. However, two diners, who were instantly called Mark, spoke up. In response, pistols were drawn and the trigger was pressed. Two men had been injured. One was a painter and decorator, and one was an unemployed person. Of course, police once again knew that Mark Lambie was the intended target. Now, rumours circulated that Kenneth Rowe was one of the persons that had entered the restaurant that day, and the reason why he was shot six months later was due to this incident. From 1997, TMD was said to be full-fledged rivals with Hackney Mandem. Despite the fact that TMD had control for the trade operations, police believe that the rivalry may have started when 16-year-old Guy Dinstakris had attended the private party and was said to be dancing with friends at Chimes in Lower Clapton Road in the early hours of the morning, January 5th, 1997. At the time of the fatal incident, it was believed that there were 300 people in attendance at this party, as well as Anthony Bourne, who was part of TMD. But more important than that is he was said to be Mark Lambie's right-handed man, the enforcer. Anthony Bourne was also known as Blue. Now, it's been alleged that Anthony Bourne had a pistol and he used it in chimes at least five times after spotting members of Hackney Mandem. Police ultimately found the pistol stashed away in the club bathroom. Guyden Stacker's case still remains unsolved and no one has been charged with the incident. Now it's also been alleged that the rivalry may have started before then, 1995, when TMD and HMD teenagers often met up and bonded over committing thefts. They would often go out to different areas of London and take people's jewellery, their clothes, money, bikes, cars. Once the loot had been divvied up and split and taken, members of TMD would then circle back round Hackney, more specifically London fields, and then take the loot all over again. So this, of course, left Hackney Mandem absolutely fuming. Just 30 days after the M of Guidance Dakaris, a group of young teenagers that were part of Hackney Mandem had cornered and trapped two members of TMD. The two teenagers were chased. However, Kingsley Popcorn, Aya Sarah, had ran to a buck of flats on Carton Lodge Estate, which was just north of Finsbury Park. Now he was dragged to the ground, hands, legs, arms, head, feet were used on Kingsley. He curled up in a fetal position and just took those blows. Then, when he was unmoving and seriously injured, he was fatally in the presence of six Hackney GMs. They left him on the roof of the flat until he was no longer alive. Now these were the last faces that the TMD teenagers saw before he passed away. Ultimately, four of the six teenagers would be sentenced to between four and six years for their part in the incident. However, street justice was certain and also rife, and TMD, under orders of Mark Lambie, had fatally 
to teenagers in two separate incidences upon their release. Look out for part two, where we discuss the downfall of Mark Lambie. Stay safe, safe.